Wow. I was originally regretting the decision, you know, to stay home from work day, but the thing was we had power outages last night and I sleep on a CPAP machine. So the second that power went out, I was up awake and awake for the rest of the night, unable to sleep. So I was like, okay, I can go to work with five minutes of sleep or I can stay home today, which I'm kind of glad I did. Now, I know a lot of you are psyched over the Doctor Who filming, and we're going to be covering that shortly because there's a lot of great picks with uh, Pearl Mackey appearing on the set. Like I said, that will go later. Today, something was announced that just basically knocked me out of my shoes. I'm not kidding. I cannot believe the cruel irony because a lot of the other fan productions for Star Trek fan films did not back Axanar when Paramount dropped the lawsuit on top of them. And the worst part of it is they didn't drop the lawsuit as Abrams and the other guy, Justin What's his nuts said weeks ago they were going to. They didn't. The, the lawsuit is still ongoing. It was basically a press move to make Paramount look good when they were at that particular convention. It's a lie. The con this lawsuit is still on, and it just got worse. All I can tell you is this. For all you guys out there in Star Trek fandom who backed CBS and Paramount over Axanar, congratulations. Here's your reward from your masters, a shit sandwich, and you're all going to have to take a bite. All right. This was put out on StarTrek.com. Let's go ahead and let's get into it, and you're going to see what I mean here very shortly. All right. Let's scroll down. And this was put out today, June 23rd, 2016. Dear Star Trek fans, Star Trek fandom is like no other. Your support, enthusiasm, and passion are the reasons that Star Trek has flourished for five decades and will continue long into the future. You are the reason that original Star Trek series was rescued and renewed in 1968, and the reason it has endured an iconic and multi-generational phenomenon that has spawned its seven television series and 13 movies. Throughout the years, many of you have expressed your love for the franchise through creating endeavors such as fan films. So today, we want to show our appreciation by bringing fan films back to their roots. In other words, back under heel. I added that, as you can see on the screen. All right, the heart of these fan films has always been about expressing one's love and passion for Star Trek. They've been about fan creativity and sharing unique stories with other fans that show admiration for the TV shows and movies. These films are a labor of love, that for any fan you know, with desire, imagination, and a camera. We want to support this innovation and encourage celebrations for this beloved cultural phenomenon, and it is with this perspective in mind they were introducing a set of guidelines at Star Trek fan films. Thank you for your ongoing and steadfast enthusiasm. As, as, uh, okay. I can't even read this anymore. They're kissing your ass while handing out your slave master chains. That's what they're doing. I love this. You can produce fan films, but you're going to do it our way. Even George Lucas has never done something like this. He embraced fan films. I'm not kidding. You're going to see why I'm pissed off here in about a short second. Because if you click on that thing where it says Star Trek fan films, here are the guidelines. I hope you're sitting down. CBS and Paramount Pictures are big believers in reasonable, reasonable fan fiction and fan creativity, and in particular, want amateur fan filmmakers to showcase their passion for Star Trek. Therefore, CBS and Paramount Pictures will not object to or take legal action against Star Trek fan productions that are non-professional and amateur and meet the following guidelines. Did you hear that? You, I can't believe this. Bend over, do it our way, or we are going to ramrod you up your ass. That's basically what they're saying. Now, I'm not kidding. Listen to these guidelines and tell me, has any Star Trek fan film ever fallen with it? They are impossible to follow. Number one, the fan production must be less than 15 minutes for a single self-contained story and no more than two segments, episodes, or parts and not to exceed 30 minutes total with no additional seasons, episodes, parts, or sequels, or remakes. Congratulations, right there. You just shut down New Voyages. You just shut down Continues. You just shut down Intrepid. You just shut down everything I can think of. Hidden Frontier, that's all shut down. That's done. Get ready for this. The title of the fan production or any parts cannot include the name Star Trek. However, the title must contain a subtitle with the phrase, a Star Trek fan production in plain typeface. The fan production cannot use the term official in either its title or subtitle or any marketing promotions or social media 
for the fan production. In other words, you can put on a fan film, you just can't put it on the web. Did you hear that? You cannot, oh, I love this. You cannot use the term official. And uh, basically, oh, it gets worse. Three, the content in the fan production must be original, not reproductions, recreations, or clips from any Star Trek production. There goes, I don't know how many videos, little things they've done on continues. Star Trek continues, I'm referring to. If non-Star Trek third-party content is used, all necessary permissions for any third-party content should be obtained in writing. Now, right there, you might as well just toss out your money on the legal, you know, be legal bullshit. If the fan production uses commercially, uh, commercially available Star Trek uniforms, accessories, toys, and props, these items must be official merchandise and not bootleg items or imitations of such commercially available products. Let me tell you a little story. Back when they were making the series, the original phasers, tricorders, and all that were made by the artist, and I can't remember his name, please forgive me, but he was not union. So every day they had to report that they found the props that they were using. And now they just basically threw the whole spirit of that out. You have to use our shit or else. Our shit or else. The fan production must be a real fan, quote unquote, production. Creators, actors, and all participants must be amateurs, cannot be compensated for their services, and it cannot be currently or previously employed on any Star Trek series, films, production of DVDs, or with any of the CBS or Paramount Pictures licensees. The fan production must be. Right. So, right there, there goes Renegades. Bye bye. There goes Renegades. Kiss it goodbye. There goes of Gods and Men. Bye bye. That's all gone. All the Renegade productions have just been kicked out with that. The fan production must be non commercial. CBS and Paramount do not object to limited fundraising for creation of a fan production. Whether one or two segments and consistent with these guidelines, as long as the total amount does not exceed $50,000, including all platform fees, and when the $50,000 goal is reached, all fundraising must cease. The fan production must only be exhibited and distributed with a no-charge basis and shared via streaming services without generating revenue. In other words, don't put it on YouTube or we are going to bend you over and ramrod your ass. Even though you're using all the money that's coming off that YouTube production to go back into this, bend over, baby. You, you cannot generate more than $50,000. You cannot you generate any revenue off it at all. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Paramount has officially outdone themselves. I remember back in the 90s when we had Star Trek lawyers showing up to conventions Matter of fact, they did this, I believe it was Vulcan the one year. And I can't remember if it was 96 or 97. No, no, sorry, wait. It was jump forward. It was in the early 2000s. But I remember this very clearly because we were sitting there at the hotel at Camp Dover Peace Conference wondering if they were going to show up because they showed up at Vulcan with the sheriff's department with a bunch of freaking lawyers walking around with blank cease and desist forms and anything they saw in the dealer's room that looked like it was uh, Star Trek or possibly even looked like it could have came from Star Trek, they would sit there, they'd write down your name, your business license, blah, blah, and you got handed a cease and desist notice and you had to be packed up and out of the dealer's room within an hour. They have just officially sank lower than whale shit. You, I love this. I just can't believe this. This is going to be commit fan suicide right here. If you classic fans are still standing up for the modern day Paramount CBS after this, I'm sorry. Don't even unfollow me, dislike me, because I will not even listen to your bullshit anymore. And trust me, I've listened to a mount of, mountain of it since Axonar came out. You've got two fan productions out there right now. One which raised like 800,000, another one reached like 400 something thousand, yet Action are, uh, um, generated a million, and they turned their backs on them and backed CBS. But here's your reward, babies. Here it is. Here's what your loyalty got you. Just like all them people who didn't take the uh, Doctor Who footage uh, trailer for the uh, 50th anniversary uh, Comic Con the one year, and and Moffat threatened that he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, allow any Doctor Who stuff to show up at the con. Sure enough, they didn't go to the con the next year, even though nobody put leaked it out on the net. See, I'm rambling because I'm pissed. 
The fan production cannot be distributed in a physical format, such as DVD or Blu-ray. Cannot be used to derive advertising for revenue, including, but not limited to, blah, blah, blah. In other words, no unlicensed Star Trek related or fan production merchandise or service can be offered for sale or given away as premium. For, and please do not write me at the end of this trying to defend this bullshit. This, uh, there is no reason for this at all. The fan production cannot derive revenue by selling or licensing fan-created production sets, props, or costumes. And you wouldn't believe how many times that a lot of these guys have done this on eBay. Hell, the one production I won't name sold an entire freaking shuttle they used as a prop for uh, one episode. So they could have money to put back into their series. It was not, it was not you know, they didn't pocket any of this. The fan production must be family friendly, suitable to videos must not include profanity, nudity, obscenity, private. Blah, blah. Okay, so that right there is common sense. So this right here, seven, okay, that's the one part of this whole thing that makes some sense. The fan production must display the following disclaimer in the on screen credits of the fan production on any of the darker material, including the fan production website or page hosting the production. And of course, here's their legal spiel right here. Creators of the fan production must not seek register of their works or any elements of the works under copyright or trademark law. And all that's common sense. Fan productions cannot create or imply any association or endorsement by CBS or Paramount Pictures. Congratulations, they targeted this right there. That's going to kill Jim Colley's production because to make it more like the old series, they were putting the Desilu Productions logos on the fronts of the episode. Congratulations, you can't do that anymore. Can you know, there. Good job. Yeah, Paramount CBS. They really stood by you, didn't they? Axonar was the first step, and congratulations, they just proved it. And if you want to view either of these, this nice, tender little letter where we're going to hold you down while we F you up your butt, or you want to read the actual effing up the butt, I'll have both of these on the end of this video, on, down in the description box in the links. This, to me, right here, it are committing professional suicide. Last time uh, Paramount did this, fans left in droves. And now all the fan productions are going to be shut down and can you help? They're going to have to all go underground or else. Matter of fact, I, I was shocked when they didn't show up in Ticonderoga, New York, or down at Waco where they film all these other things with cease and desist notice already saying take the shit down or else because that's how low they are. And forgive me for being angry. Uh, there's going to be a, a report on Doctor Who filming later. I'm sorry if I drag this out, but I am in shock. This is the most blatant violation of the fans since the 80s, 90s. That whole spiel when you couldn't even put up a website that had a Klingon headpiece on it or it would be shut down. Okay, well, folks, I'm going to get off here because I've been dragging you through the mud for long enough. Leave some comments in the comment box on how you feel about this, what happened. And I'll talk to you all later about Doctor Who. Peace, folks.